Hey guys, if you haven't already, give the video a like. Subscribe to my channel. This is a What If series, and I'll be doing more down the road. So enjoy and thank you for watching. Hey guys, I'm back with another one. Black All Might is back with another What If. So what I want to do is I want to do a little small recap. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over a little small recap and then I'm going to get into the story. And for some like I'm going to give y'all some details of how I'm going to like continue the story and what's going to be happening. So right now we had a little battle, the battle trial arc with Deku and Bakugo as intense as that was. Even the Stuart like all might say, please, you guys just take it easy because both of you knowing Deku and Bakugo about their like history, them being friends and necessarily rivals, they would destroy that building with their power alone so with that ochaku would came out of nowhere challenging both of them but she was challenging more of izuku as this that's due to the fact that she felt the connection with izuku and this is due to the some of y'all some of the commenters well people in my comments not commenters people in the comments telling me deku x momo deku x toga deku x ochaku and i'm going with deku x ochaku in this one since with Ochaku delivering that rival-like connection, she's saying that she will be better than them or stronger than them. Or, like, to her per se, she wants to test her powers and what she can do. I knew you guys were interested in seeing what Ch Ochaku can do in this one. So, with that, Ochaku is going to be the love interest of Deku. So, and as far as any other details that i want to get into is that deku's ne necessarily gonna be fighting he's just not gonna be fighting for like he's not gonna be fighting just ua villains like ju not just my hero academia villains he's not gonna be fighting just those type of villains he's gonna be fighting some of the villains from dragon ball z due to the fact that right now where deku's at he would easily take like take out every last villain in my hero academia universe and I don't want that to happen because Deku right now is at an OP level since he has Super Saiyan 2 in his sleeve. And so with that, I want to give this buff. So not these characters. Todoroki, he has some surprises for you. Bakugo, he's going to have some surprises for you with the one for all quirk that he has. Uh, Ochaku, as we're going to get into the story, you're going to learn about what she has in store for Deku. And just how hard she can push Deku or what level she can push Deku at. As far as for now, until Deku finishes fighting like the Z fighter villains, like the Z fighter villains in this story. As for now, Deku's going to remain, perm like not permanently, but he's going to remain at Super Saiyan 2 only until like the last season of one, like My Hero Academia when All Might fights all for one. Deku's gonna be there and he's gonna take over that part so instead of it being All Might it's gonna be Deku so with that part right there let's get into the story because I don't want to waste you guys any more time because you've been waiting for this part and I've been lazy because I have been uploading consistently like I should due to the fact that everyone's tripping about this corona shit so I just trying to been writing stuff out and trying to keep in my space from a bunch of people who even has the slightest of a cough <laughs> I'm just playing. I just been lazy, so that's my excuse. I'm just lazy, so that's all that just needs to be said. But I will continue to upload consistency like I should. Anyway, let's get into the story. So Deku, after the battle trial arc, he goes out to train and he trains in a grassy field. While he looks over, he sees Ochaku and she does the same. She's training and she's relatively training harder than what she did in then her former counterpart in the cannon. So she's training, letting off various amounts of key blast attack, shooting a wave so similar to what like Deku just sees it and he says, w w what's that? It's so much similar to Deku's Detroit blast. And Ochaku would go to say, oh, it's Kamehameha. And Deku would just be interested in it, but it's not a technique that he would use. Also, that you know that Deku has Detroit Blast. That's what I've named it in turn for the Kamehameha. So, yeah, that's basically said. So, she would be fighting, training everything as Deku walked over to her and asked her, So, you can do all these various amounts of attacks. What are you? And Ochaku would go to say, Well, I'm just a mortal who just trains hard. That's all I am. 
I noticed that there are beings in this world that possibly are stronger than me, and I don't want to ever feel like I'm weak. I want to have the strength to battle against strong opponents and to have villains cower before strength. Yes, Ochaku has a somewhat attitude of Jiren. While not in a negative way, she has it in a positive way as she wants power to protect those she cares about. She wants strength to protect those she cares about. She wants the power to obliterate villains that she sees that are not worthy to be a part of the world. That's her viewpoint. And with that, Deku just says, oh, so you just, you want to be a hero. You just want to be a hero so you can make the world a better place for, pe for children and their children's children. And she goes to shake her head, yeah, you can say it like that. And as Deku just gets into his fighting stance and she says, oh, so you want to fight me? Deku goes to reply, you did say that you were going to be better. You did say that you were going to be stronger. Let me see what you got. As Ochaku, she without hesitation rushed Deku and punched him directly in the face. Fast as hell. She punched him in the face and delivered a punch to the stomach as Deku... He caught a punch to the stomach, but he was surprised at how she managed to even punch him in the face. And that's, this was the fact that Deku was underestimating her. So when Deku grabbed her like fist or grabbed her arm, he took it and slammed her into the ground. And she basically ate the attack. She ate the slam to the ground while using her hands to basically propel her into the air. So what she did was... She used her hands like in sort of you doing like a back stand or something like that. She used her hands to flip and kick Deku dead in the chest as Deku would go tumbling backwards. And Deku would say, well, you have some impressive strength, Ochaku. You're very strong. Possibly the strongest person that I'm fighting like now. Like not well, not the strongest person. You would rank. So I fought All Might and I fought Bakugo. Now I'm fighting you. I would say... In your own right, you are strong, but you're necessarily more weaker. Hmm, I don't think you would ever beat me. As Deku's using these tactics to taunt Ochaku, trying to bring out more of her power, as she says, you dare to underestimate me, as she unleashes this, like, pinkish, dark colored energy that's coming out of her. Basically, okay, so you know how Jiren's aura is? Like how it's all fiery, reddish type like that. Imagine Ochaku's aura, but it's like a pinkish, it's a, like a dark pinkish aura that's irradiating out of her body. And she instantly powers up. And right now, Ochaku's power level is probably at somewhere around Super Saiyan. So she pushes her power level all the way up to that point. So Super Saiyan is like 50 times his base. So that's how much Ochaku powered up. And she instantly blitzes Deku, sending off so many attacks to his gut, to his chest, to his face, tripping Deku, basically not giving Deku a time to react. Each attack that he threw, she countered and instantly punched him in the face. And Deku, seeing this, he powered up to Super Saiyan. And both of them were going at it, delivering so many various amounts of blows and attacks. Basically, this grassy area that they were fighting in, it didn't look like a grassy area anymore due to the fact that every time they punched, they would make a crater into the grassy area. And it would just be like they would be bouncing back and forth, like going like each hit would deliver such a shock wave that some of the officials might have felt it. Somebody felt it, even All Might, he felt it, but he would go to investigate what it was because he thought it was a villain due to the fact that he was patrolling. So since All Might hasn't lost his quirk yet, he's still doing his hero thing. So he goes to see that Ochaku and Deku, they're sparring against each other. And he basically tells them both, hey, I'm here. And they both stop to see All Might. And not well, Deku stopped to see All Might. And Ochaku, she did not. She just says, you let your guard down and instantly delivers a powerful punch to Deku's gut, making him spit up, like making him spit up spit, like clock up spit and fall to the ground. And Deku just clenching his stomach as Ochaku floats down with this pinkish aura like all over her. And she goes to say, you know something? You, to be as strong as you are, you did let your guard down. And Deku says, hey, you think this is just my only power? I'm toying with you as Deku goes to transform into a Super Saiyan 2. And that really doesn't phase Ochaku because she says, oh, so that's another power up. So you have another form. So basically what this one is, is basically an increase. It's like an ascendant form of your other form. 
if I'm getting that right, so when you transform into the Super Saiyan and you transform into this, I think you just like broke through a wall. So I think you're more stronger in this form, huh? Basically, if I power up. So, Ochaku, little backstory. Ochaku's backstory. Sorry about that. But Ochaku's backstory, since she was little, she's been training. She's been training hard. And due to her viewpoints, it's to become, she wants to become the strongest. Well, not necessarily the strongest, because some of that is going to decline since she's going to be like a love interest of Deku's. Some of that's going to be declining. I'm not going to make Ochaku too OP. I'm just going to make it to the fact that she will not be a, like a Sakura. She not necessarily like she is a Sakura in this anime. I don't want her to be powerless. So I want her to be strong to the point that when something dramatic or something incredible comes up into play, she could be right by Deku's side and fight with him. Because right now, Ochaku does feel attraction towards Deku as I'm going to further explain it. So now let's get back into the story. As Ochaku powers up, she's instantly at the same power level that Izuku's at. Izuku's fighting that full power, and so is she. So Izuku goes to say in his, my, his head, like, what is this girl? Not only does she have the power to stand against me in Super Saiyan 1, but let alone 2. And just like I said, if you're interested in saying, oh, Ochaku's never going to get that strong. She's never became that strong ever. Why are you making Ochaku so strong to go against Super Saiyan 2? Well, let's do this explanation. Let's get this out of the picture. Jiren was a mortal who trained so hard after losing his friends, his family, his teachers, his comrades. After losing everybody he cared about was a mortal who went into training so hard that he became so strong he became stronger than the god of destruction and he was just a mortal he wasn't immortal he didn't have no amazing attributes jiren trained to get that power and i'm not necessarily going to make ochaku that strong i can't stress that enough so let's just continue into the story so now let's just get that out the way so as they're getting ready to fight all might tells them no more no you're not doing this we're not, you're not finna fight right now. This is over. And they would go to say, oh, why? Why would you interrupt it? All Might goes to say, well, you know the grassy area that was basically just comfortable? It was peaceful? Well, look at it now. And they would go to look at the grassy, grassy area and say, oh, we did that. And they see so many craters and broken trees and stuff like that. And... Deku just powers down back to his base form and, and Chaku just powers down too. And she would go to blush as she's seen what Izuku was capable of. And she noticed that he would become a strong hero in his own right. And while she didn't want to be like a stepping stone or a back pedal, she wanted to become strong too. But now, basically, it pushed her away from that. She only, she didn't care too much about strength at this point. Well, she did care about the strength, but she didn't care about it as much as she did. Basically, she wants to impress Izuku. Her goal in her head, well, the goal that's just now appeared is that she want to impress Izuku. She wants to somehow ask Izuku out. And she also wants to stand by his side while he fights his upcoming battles. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> I had to make up something, so uh, let's just go with that. So as the story continues, after the battle trial arc, we are now in the USJ arc. And as everyone's getting ready, picking now, like getting on the bus, Shoto Aizawa tells them that we're going to start rescue missions. As they get onto the bus and all of them are talking, while Asui basically saying that Bakugo's a hothead, he's saying, I'll kick your ass, he just says, See what I mean? He's a hothead. And all of them are just Kimonari, uh, Asui. There are not Asui, I just said that. But Araka, she even goes to say that, well, even in his own right, if he, even if he's a hothead, I think he can become incredibly strong due to what his power can do. And with that, Bakugo just looks away and just says, you're all extras. As Bakugo, he's not going to be as much of a hothead in this one, but he's still going to have some of his personalities from the original canon. And while some of that is going to decline, because he sees Deku as more of a rival that he has to surpass. Remember, I said that Bakugo is going to be more like a Vegeta in this sense. It's due to the fact that Deku's always going to be one step ahead of Bakugo, but Bakugo is going to be right there behind him. 
So with that, all the kids, they end up getting off the bus and they're going in there. 13 escort, like escorts them and tells them what they're going to be doing. They're going to be saving various amounts of people from different sites, from different areas around the USJ trial, well, USJ arc, around the stadium, around the field, around the plaza. And all of a sudden, this purple like warp gate just opens and they see all these villains and stuff come out. And Key Minari, he was just, oh, so we're going to be fighting real villains too? And Bakugo is hesitant. And Deku just senses all kinds of evil energy in these people. And Deku goes to yell and say out, those are not fake villains. And Shoto Aizawa just tells 13, get the kids back to the bus. We need to get them out of here. And without any hesitation, Deku, feeling the urge, he feels his blood boiling. He feels intimidation as he sees this big bird-like creature with a, his brain exposed and he sees Tomura and he sees he sees all these villains just come out the gate and Deku just says "Ooh, I hope they're strong I feel some kind of excitement as Deku's just power up like he powers up to Super Saiyan and he rushes like he rushes towards the gate without any hesitation at Soto Aizawa he tried to stop Deku but Deku was too fast as Deku went for the strongest one there and he punched the Nomu the Nomu didn't not he tanked that point like due to the fact that Nomu has shock absorption yes I understand that he has shock absorption so with that Deku punched the Nomu he punched the Nomu so hard that the Nomu went flying back and this was shock Tomura Shigaraki as he he didn't know he thought the Nomu was hurt and he says oh the, the Nomu's not hurt as the Nomu get back up and says Deku just instantly just jumping back and forth getting to his fighting stance and says I think you're the strongest one here I will fight you instead as Deku hit the sh like the uh, Nomu with so many attacks basically punching it in his mouth punching it in his head punching it in his stomach tripping it slamming it down the Nomu was getting bodied by Deku delivering so many various amounts of attacks to him. The Nomu managed to hit Deku one time, but Deku parried the attack, blocking it off, and instantly taking the arm of the Nomu and slamming him to the ground. While the Nomu was in, like, Deku was hitting the Nomu so fast that it didn't even have enough time to regenerate, let alone enough time to, like, make an attack or a decisive attack towards Deku, soon to the fact that he couldn't, the Nomu basically couldn't handle the speed and power and force that Deku was delivering as everyone else is looking at awe and Deku just Ochaku she just she's already noticed this Bakugo he doesn't feel any intent because Bakugo he rushes off Ochaku she rushes off too they're all fighting the regular villains and all that kind of stuff while Tomura Shigaraki he's just shocked he's in shock he doesn't know what to do he at this point like all these kids are strong. They weren't supposed to be this strong because this this Nomu was designed to fight All Might. It was designed to kill All Might. And with that, like he was he was in a shocking state. He didn't know what to do. As Deku, when he slapped the Nomu down, he says, "Huh, you didn't give me much of a match that I was looking for." Oh well. As Deku just unleashed a Detroit blast and blast the Nomu right out of the USJ Stadium. And when I say kids, I mean exceptional students like Bakugo, Ochaku, and Deku. They're basically taking out all these villains relatively easily. As Deku just got done beating the shit out of the Nomu. And now he looks at Korogiri and Shigura, Tomura Shigaraki. As he looks at them with a death stare. And he tells them, so you were planning to kill the symbol of peace. I hate villains like you. I do not like people who are designed to disrupt kindness, to disrupt acts. I don't know what happened to you in your lifetime. I don't know what trouble you went through. I don't know what kind of hatred that makes you hate the society. I don't know who warped your mind to make you become a villain. But it ends today as Deku flies over to Tomura Shigaraki and flicks him dead in the head, sending Tomura Shigaraki flying into the nearest wall and creating a crater. As Korogiri he instantly appears over there and takes Tomura Shigaraki. They both disappear. They both disappear as Tomura Shigaraki was fading to the warp gate. Deku was trying to get over there with his speed, but it was too late. As Tomura Shigaraki just was looking at Deku, like just was knocked. He was knocked out. He wasn't looking at Deku, but he was knocked out. And he instantly faded into the portal as they both left.
And Deku just said, shit, I missed him. I tried to catch them. I, tr <sighs> I guess it's no use now. As Shota Waizawa, he's like, what the hell? Due to these three powers, like these three kids, like, so he, he looks at uh, like Ochaku and he looks at Bakugo and he looks at Deku and says, these three, these three students are at the top of their class. Uh, oh my God. If I'm not surprised, they might be like recommendary, like they might be near to the hero spot in less than two. He, like Shoto Aizawa didn't have the words necessary to explain what he just saw. Every, even the kids were shocked. Even the teachers were shocked as they thought that something bad was going to happen. Like somebody was going to get injured or something like a death threat was going to happen. Or they basically was expecting the worst out of a bad situation. So with that, after all the smoke clears and all the villains that were there got arrested and Deku's basically talking to Shoto Azawa. He's talking to a bunch of people and everything. They continue as they did the USJ arc. Now that everything's situated, everything's just fixed up and all that kind of stuff, they did the USJ arc. And they had a good time learning new rescue strategies and all this kind of stuff. Basically, the USJ arc that should have happened without the interference of the villains happened because Deku, Ochaku, and Bakugo, they basically beat the shit out of all the villains that were there in that, in that canon. So with that, that's the end for part five of What If Deku Was a Saiyan. Due to the much, I didn't put that much of strategy or not. I didn't put that much into this one due to the fact that while Deku's a Saiyan, Deku would easily, easily body the normal without ease he would body the normal without ease and it wouldn't even take that much due to the fact that he's fast he's strong when he powered up to a saiyan and due to his saiyan blood boiling and all that kind of stuff deku loves a thrill of a strong fight so without anything being said i'm gonna con continue i'm stuttering but i'm gonna continue uploading and making my videos better trying to like make up my own what ifs and all that kind of stuff i'm going to be uploading consistency like consistently due to the fact that i wasn't for a while you know, i took a little break i was tired Tried to get my mental mind straight but anyway you guys as for now this one's coming out i'm gonna have what if deku mastered one for all come out soon i'm also gonna have be creating a new what if of what if naruto had one for all i'm going to be creating that as i'm writing the script at this moment as we speak i'm also going to add a new part to ichi what if ichigo was a saiyan i'm also going to add a new part to what if jiren like the strongest hero i'm also going to add a new part to sakura and so on and so forth and then i'm going to be starting a new uh, like a new series relatively soon a new series that what if asta had was a super saiyan or what if Asta had one for all? Or what if Asta had... I don't know in the comments. For this new what if that I'm going to do. For what if Asta had this specific power. I want you guys to tell me in the comments below. What should Asta have? And please make it good. Don't make it boring. Like what if Asta was a saiyan? What if Asta had Ultra Instinct? What if Asta had the Nine-Tailed Fox? What if Asta had this, this, that, and the other? Basically, I want to see that Asta become strong. I'm going to go into that series. And then I'm going to be doing a bunch of other series too. A bunch of new stuff that comes to this channel. So anyway, without any further ado, you guys have a good day, a good night, and you always remember what I tell you guys. Plus Ultra. Good night, guys.